Yo, Aaron. Aaron. I'm giving a speech today. What do you mean? Like, for the chapel. I'm doing it in five minutes. I figured today would be good because all high school is gone, so it's not as many people. But I am actually really nervous. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'll see you. Alright, see you. Alright, do you hear that? Where's your chapel today? Yeah, he told me. Something about prayers to me. Oh, great. I was so nervous. You did pretty good. Well, now we got school, so. Then basketball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you. Bed and on 
and popping, empty plastic car that's stopping. All of a sudden, labels shocking, asking for another option. Coppers asking why I'm speeding, minor league, major league, and flying, take them to the precinct. All you say to me, the reason. Spot to get on Spotify. Yeah. Seen the numbers, they don't lie. Yeah. Yellow birdie in the logo. We on two plus the ultra. High stakes in my funds low. Honeymoon in the bungalow. No shirt, it's the gun show. Man, I'm flexing on my ex. I'm in the pocket like bread. Magic and bread like the eggs. Starting, but don't try and play. Then I went ghost like I'm sways. Two zone in the paddock going, that's beach and Nave. Pass a hall for the slow mo, that's sexy wave. And I wrist, wrist, wrist. I know there's opposition, but it's switch, switch, switch. I know you seen them do it, but not like this. Money make you war it break, you take the game before it takes you. Oh, yo, I love this song. Hold up. You need me just yell out. They wanna know. They wanna know. Who I do it for? Who I do it for? I do it all, I do it all, do it for the kids. They wanna know, they wanna know who I do it for. Who I do it for? I do it all. Yeah, I do it for the kids. This thorn in my flesh is the only thing I got left, and it's so hard to confess when everybody thinks you're perfect. But I cry for you if you feel it too. So the author will develop the character using direct or indirect characterization. Tell me the difference between direct and indirect characterization. Aaron? Aaron! Huh? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Aaron, will you please stay after with me? Are you okay? I'm fine. Is it Jared? No, I don't really want to talk about him. Okay. I understand you don't want to talk about it. I'm not going to make you. But if you ever do want to talk to someone, I'm here. Okay? Okay. okay. We have the same argument month after month after month. I'm just getting so sick and tired of this. I don't know. My mother-in-law died. Back again? Who are you? <laughs> I'm just here to make things grow in a place where everything's dead. How'd you know him? He's my friend. I see. You know, a lot of people come here with heavy hearts, but you seem especially burdened. How come? It's my fault. It's my fault that he's dead. 
It's not your fault. What? I only know one person who is responsible for life and death, and you're not him. Do you know how many times I have planted flowers? I've watered them, I've waited on them, and they die. Should I blame myself if they die? Well, I mean, they're just flowers, so... Look around. Whenever people come here, all they see is death. It's my job to show people that there's still life. There's a beautiful cycle to life. The way I see it, you have two options. You either blame yourself for a death you're not responsible for, or you celebrate a life that you still have. Why did he have to die then? Maybe you're asking the wrong question. Instead of asking why he had to die, why don't you ask yourself, why are you still alive? Go home and think about it. I don't want you to stay out too late. Okay, thank you. Or you celebrate a life that you still have. Good to see you. Bad day? Yeah. You want to talk about it? Pretty good listener. I guess I just want Jared back. Hmm. Is that really what you want? What? It seems like when Jared died, a part of you died with him. To fill the hole in your heart, you've put in guilt. And I don't want you to live with that burden. Well, how am I supposed to fill that hole? The opportunity will present itself. But for now, why don't you go home and get some rest?
the opportunity will present itself. There will be a prayer walk held next Monday, 7.30 in the morning, so please come out. This is in Jared's honor, so we would love it if you would come and pray. What's the prayer walk about? We are honoring Jared. He started Acts 29, and so that's what we're going to be doing, just honoring his memory. All right, thank you. Well, you seem happy. Yeah, my school's holding a prayer walk in Jared's honor. I'm gonna go. That's awesome. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, yeah, if you need anything, I'll be tending to these flowers here. All right, see ya. See ya. Hello. Nice day, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Was he your friend? Yeah. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, well, well I did not mean to do that. Uh, I know the gardener here. Oh, oh no, don't worry about it. He, he can't fix this. <sighs> Man, I can't imagine how you must feel after what happened. How do you know what happened? Well, oh, I gotta go. See you around. Imagine how you must feel after what happened. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta go. No, I didn't mean to. Ethan, Xander. Has anyone seen Aaron? Uh, I think he left something to do with Jared. Oh, okay. You're here early. I just. You just want to be alone? Yeah. What's wrong? That flower will revive when the time comes. What? 
Well, it's not dead. It's not wilted or disconnected from the root. Just give it a little water and a little sun and it will come back to life. Now tell me, honestly, what did that man say to you? He, he told me I was guilty. What happened is not your fault. I, I shot the ball. I practically murdered him. You think you have that much power? What do you mean? I only know one person who's responsible for life and death. Let me ask you, are you responsible for his life? No. Then how can you blame yourself for his death? So I shot the ball. Aaron. How do you feel? His death is not your fault. You don't have to think that it is. Aaron. How do you feel? No welcome, no hello. Worked a lot of hours today. Try to make some money for this family. No thanks. The only thing that you do for this family is tear it apart. was never my plan. My plan was life. Forever. I never wanted separation and the pain that comes with it. Come here. Death causes terrible pain because it was never part of my plan for you. Aaron, forgive yourself. Let me fill that hole in your heart. Let me get rid of the pain. As I told you before, it's my job to bring life to an area where everything seems dead. Oh!
Tom, what's wrong? It's your father. What do you mean? He's gone, Aaron. He left. For where? I don't know, Aaron. He's, he's not coming back. This is not the way. You know just as much as I do that I have nothing left to live for. You choosing death is not the answer. Now what do you know? Aaron, I died so that you could have life. I know you think death will end it, but there is another way. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And I love you. No matter what you've done. Jared! Jared! No matter what others think of you. Really? I didn't think you were really oh. No matter how you feel. <sighs> Man, I can't imagine how you must feel after what happened. No matter what you do. My arms will always be open. And I'll never let you go. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights me. This morning, we have Aaron Jess. He's going to come and speak to you all, so let's welcome Aaron. Uh, recently, I've learned a few things. Uh, it all goes back to earlier this year, after an incident resulting in the death of a friend. I watched as it happened, and I believe it was my fault. And that's where my story begins. <laughs> 